up, brothers and sisters in Christ? Welcome to the Smith Figures World Daily Devotional Podcast. My name is Victoria Eorg and I'm your host for this podcast. And thank you so much for joining us today. Without further delay, let us start with prayer. Father, like God Almighty, King of Kings, and all of us, we're about to start your word right now. In the name of Jesus, we stand against every distraction and we command them to break by fire right now in the name of Jesus. And we pray that you help us to focus on your word right now in Jesus Christ's name. The title of today's session is Unity of the Spirit. Unity of the Spirit. We will read as givers Ephesians chapter 4, verse 3. And a scripture reading for the day is taken from Psalm chapter 133. So let us start with Ephesians chapter 4, verse 3. Endeavoring to keep the unity of the Spirit in the bond of peace. Endeavoring to keep the unity of the Spirit in the bond of peace. Psalms chapter 133. Behold, how good and how pleasant it is for brethren to dwell together in unity. It is like the precious oil upon the head, running down on the beard, the beard of Aaron, running down on the edge of his garments. It is like the dew of Hermon, descending upon the mountains of Zion. For there the Lord commanded the blessing, life forevermore. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. So today we're talking about unity of the spirit. And we will talk a lot about the church, the status of the church. Um, so, you know, um, like the church is the body of Christ. It's not just like a building. We're talking about all believers together. They make up the church, which is the body of Christ. Spence Vigas Watch has said that we are bound forever out of loyalty to God to ensure that no division comes into the church body, to see that nothing comes into the assembly to cause division. And, you know, it's actually common First of all, the first thing that, like you see, we have many, 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 many different denominations in Christianity. This is already one point of division. But nevertheless, I like the fact that, like, some churches, like, accept to, like, mingle with other denominations, to have activities together, conferences together, and to preach the gospel together. But though, unfortunately, there are still some church denominations we consider like that they are the only true and real church of God and that all the rest are doomed and stuff like that. But really, it's our responsibility as believers to ensure unity in the body of Christ, not just in like the four buildings of the four walls of the building of your like physical location where you do church, but I mean in the body of Christ, we should really ensure unity and Smith Vigas what says here that like we have to be careful if a person comes along with a prophecy uh, that is tearing down and bringing trouble. We have to denounce it accordingly and judge it by the word. Because I also know that, like, whether it's in local assemblies or, like, among believers, you know, some of the things we choose or divide are some types of prophecies. And prophecies should not be to tear down or bring trouble or destroy unity in the church, but really, like, to bring hopefulness, to bring... Uh, perfection to bring compassion to bring comfort to bring edification even if like a prophecy is painful for example like exposing sin or I don't know the aim is not to divide or to cause hatred but really like to reconcile to restore to forgive you know so we really have to be careful when it comes to prophecy and like in general the way we treat the body of Christ because we are all believers, we all all believers are part of the body of Christ, all believers are part of like the church of Christ with the big C. And we really have to be careful to not create division. Like when we come together, like and I'm talking about like really globally, um it's good to like unite ourselves under the word of God not on the doctrines of the church because the churches which have their own doctrines to the word of God at times which are not even biblical but when we unite under the word of God we can walk more effectively together if you see what I mean um, so it's, as, it's our responsibility as believers that if anything comes into the body of Christ to create division to hurt the flock to slow down the progress of the kingdom of heaven to slow down because we are supposed to take over we're supposed to preach the gospel heal the sick lay hands uh, cast out devils we're supposed to do the works of Jesus raise the dead and you know so when it comes to pass that like something is coming in 
to destroy the unity of the church, to slow down the progress of the church, to slow down evangelism and the works of Jesus. That thing is not of God. So we have to recognize that fact and to remember that we have to endeavor to keep the unity of the spirit in the bond of peace. So I don't know if like you get the point, but like at your own level, like let's not cultivate church hatred like hatred, like denominational hatred, let's say this way, let's not cultivate denominational hatred, like before you judge, quote-unquote, a church, I would say, try to find out what is your doctrine, what do they actually teach, and if there's something there that is not biblical, bring out what is biblical and say, okay, this is wrong, denounce what is wrong and, and say, state clearly what is biblical and what should be done, and yeah, and pray for these people, and also look at yourself, like, where are you missing out in terms of, like, biblical sound doctrine? But the aim is really not to tear our denominations down and to hate on each other. Because imagine if all Christian denominations, which are really Bible-centered, you know, if we all came together, like, under the Word of God and did huge things of the Kingdom of Heaven, it would be so different. So I really want us to not be agents of division. But instead of instead to be agents of unity in the church under the word of God, we're not gonna like unite to sin against God. We're gonna unite to obey the Bible. So this is the quote for today. When we think that the church is poor and needy, we forget that the spirit of intercession can unlock every sieve in the world. When we think that the church is poor and needy, we forget that the spirit of intercession can unlock every sieve in the world. Let us pray. Father God Almighty, please forgive us because. Forgive us for the places and areas where we have contributed in dividing and tearing down the church instead of building the body of Christ to expand the kingdom of heaven and to like enforce the kingdom of heaven. So uh, God, we really pray for forgiveness and we pray that you open our eyes and that you help us to really teach our Lord to keep the unity of the spirit in the bond of peace. In Jesus Christ's name we pray. Amen. Thank you so much for listening. From start to finish, I believe you've been blessed and edified and if it is so, indeed, Please, why not share on social media? Why not share on your different social media accounts? Like, bless people with teachings. And also, um, if you have any prayer requests, please let me know on social media so that I can pray for you and the Lord Jesus himself is going to answer you. And what else can I say? Like, this new episode every day. Please be available tomorrow for the next episode and don't listen alone. Invite others to listen to you. Share the link. God bless you. Bye-bye.